and data structure which includes the pandas data frame and the panda series objects. So just to give you a brief introduction of what these objects do. Um, so basically we start off with a series and a series is like a one dimensional array that actually stores data for one specific column. And a series object contains both the index, which uh, stands for like the row number and the values in each of these respective rows. And then you also have a data frame, which is essentially a collection of series put together. It is like a two dimensional array that stores data from multiple columns. So uh, it is also done in like a pretty way. So when you view it on your Google Colab, a data frame will look more squarish and uh, more stylized for your reference. Uh, this is just a disclaimer to say that uh, certain functions can work with both series and data frames, but there are also some that only work with a series or a data frame. So uh, what this means, we will be covering in uh, later on into this presentation. So uh, before we begin, uh, for those of you who have just set up your practical notebook, uh, an example notebook, you can see that the first few lines will include uh, importing pandas as a package. So uh, as well as reading the data frame. So make sure that uh, both of these lines are in your notebook and run over as we continue on with the rest of the workshop. So if you all have any troubles with like the path that we have put in here or any of the lines, if there's an error, please let us know in chat as well. And those in real life, you can just refer to any of us. So we'll be moving on to viewing the data frame. So basically, um, you currently have a data frame. You have a data set that you just read in using the pandas.readcsv. However, you don't know um, like how the data frame looks like in like how many rows are there, what are the features of the data. So what you want to do here is to actually find out, okay, how many rows, how many columns I have in my data frame. So this is why you have this function called df.shape. It actually shows the number of rows and columns in the data frame formatted in a tuple. So if you were to run df.shape in your notebook, you should get a uh, bracket 11, 11. So this is for the example notebook. And, uh, do you all know what this means? 11, 11. So basically what this means is that we have uh, 11 rows and 11 columns in our data frame. So then now you want to know like, okay, uh, I have 11 rows, okay, but what are the features of these columns? What are the column names, right? So then you will have df.columns, which is basically a function that shows the names of all the columns in your data set. So if you were to run this line, you will actually get an index that contains the names of all your columns in the data frame. So as uh, Dylan has prefaced earlier on the data set, uh, you should be able to see these 11 columns as part of your data set. Now you you know the names of the columns, but you don't know the values inside. You want like a statistical summary or you want a, some kind of summary about the columns in your data frame. So this is where df.info comes in. Um, basically what this does is that it shows the number of non-null values. So values that are filled in with numbers, strings, and not the NAN value, which I will be covering later on as well as the data types of all the columns. So if you were to run this function, uh, you will basically get this string output. Uh, it shows you that, okay, yeah, you are running a data frame and there are some important to take note information here, such as the column, the non null count and the D type, which stands for data type. So uh, from each of the column names, you will see that, oh, okay, there are 11 non null objects for passenger ID, for example. So this means that if you remember, the number of rows is 11. 
So that means all rows have been filled with something that is not an NAN. And also the D type means that uh, this data type, uh, this column is taking in this specific data type. So for those of you who are uh, not so familiar with Python, uh, there are certain data types that you will be working with in pandas in general, which include the integer, floats, strings, uh, mostly these few are. And strings are actually contained inside a data type object. So just to, uh, this is just to give you an idea of what data type each of the columns can take in. So as you can see, uh, under H, there are also 10 non now objects. And what this means is that um, there is actually one now value in the column. So same for cabin, if there are four non nows, then that means there are seven now values in the column. So now we have a good idea of like how many now values we have, what kind of the column takes in. Now we want to know like, uh, is there a statistical summary? Is there a, a way of seeing, okay, what's the minimum, what's the maximum value? So this is where df.describe comes in. Uh, what this does is essentially if you run this line, uh, by default, it should return you a list of like the count, the count basically like the number of non now values in the column, mean values, standard deviation, and like all your quintile values are. So minimum, maximum, 25%, 50, 75. Um, so if you were to include like an extra argument that says like include all, then this would also include some of the non-numerical columns. So yeah, by default, this should only return you columns where there are integer slash float values in it. Uh, so now we move on to is now. So basically, this is a function that shows if the value in a specific row slash column is a null value. So it's a direct map to your data frame. What I mean is that uh, if, let's say we had the data frame of 11 times 11 earlier on, and previously they were filled in with like certain values and stuff. So what this means is that if, the value filled in is like a NAN value in this specific like row slash column, then you'll return a true. If not, uh, if it's filled in with like some number of string, it will be written as false. So yeah, this is a bit messy to see, right? Like in general, you, you don't wanna like just comb through your whole data frame just to find one specific null value in the row and column, if, especially if your data frame is bigger. So what you, is that if you just want to know like how many null values there are, you can actually run uh, df.isNull along with an extra function dot sum. Uh, this will actually be covered on later on into the workshop as well. But in general, this is a useful way of using dot is now. And this outputs the number of uh, null values, NAN values in each of the columns. So now we have a better idea of like how many null values, what kind of columns we're dealing with. So uh, I think it is important now to see how the data frame looks like. So this is where you use uh, df.h and you can actually pass in uh, argument n and n takes in an integer. n refers to the number of rows that you'll be viewing from the data frame. And for df.h, when you pass n, it will basically view the first n rows in the data frame. Uh, there's also an additional argument tail that uh, basically does the same thing. So if you pass df.tail instead, you will view the last n rows in your data frame. So if you were to pass n equals to 20, you can view the first 20 rows or the last 20 rows. So now we have okay, how the data frame looks like. Now maybe we're gonna start off with changing the data types for each of the columns. Uh, this is just a reminder that if you have any confusion regarding the content we have discussed, uh, feel free to surface it in the chat. So uh, yeah, the workshop members can help you out. And uh, 
yeah now we'll be moving on to df dot s type so uh, in order to illustrate what this function does i will need to do like a before and after comparison so uh, let's say we want to look we want to convert like uh, the passenger class into something that we can work with like a string so uh, what i do is that i preview passenger class which is done by calling df column p class so this is like a indexing method that we'll be covering later on but uh, it is integral to let you all know first and so basically when you run df.p class you should get like a series object as an output which shows like the name of the column as well as the data type so as you can see over here there is a data type for the column which is integer base 64. This means that every single value in this column is a integer. So um, we want to now change like the values in this column to a string. So what I do is that I will pass in this column dot s type and then I will input like, you know, the format that I want it to be. So if I want it to be a string, in this example, I would pass in str, which stands for string. There are also other arguments you can pass in. So if you want to convert into a float, you can like put float, for example. So uh, what this does is that when you invoke this line, you will actually get a series object as an output, which shows that the data type is now converted to an object column. So an object column can include like uh, multiple data types, including strings. So uh, this just means that, okay, you just printed out the series as it is, like it's just a printing. It doesn't really uh, save like the passenger class column in your data frame into like a new column in that data frame. So essentially what I mean is that if you really want to change like the column in that data frame completely, you will actually have to do like an equal sign. So what you do here is DFP class equals to DFP class dot S type string. So this actually references back this column to the column in the data frame. So you will actually be changing that column in that data frame. I hope this is clear. If, you, if you're a bit confused, uh, the chat function is always available. Uh, we'll be moving on to selecting slash filtering the data. So this is one of the more important operations that you can do with pandas. So before we begin on this section, uh, just want to give you all like a briefer slash uh, recalling the contents of the data frame. So uh, we'll be working with a lot of these like uh, row, row indexers as well as your columns. So it is important that uh, you all know the names of the columns. Huh? Uh, in any case, you can always refer back to the example notebook. So now we'll be moving on to this, uh, the first kind of function that we can use which is basically, or oh, if I want, like what if I want specific columns from this data frame? So let's say I only want the passenger ID slash the age of all the passengers on board the Titanic. So what I will do over here is to pass this line called DF passenger ID and age. Note that there is a double uh, square bracket. And the reason why we do this is because it actually returns you the data frame, a data frame. So basically this is the original data frame. And when I pass passenger ID slash, slash H, pandas will look for passenger ID as well as the H column. And then it will return this output, which is a passenger ID and the H column in a data frame. So now we have uh, df.log. So this function is also uh, important for you to like, learn how to index your data frame, how to slice the data frame up. So we'll 
uh, df.log in general works uh, with its labels. Uh, and what labels means, I will show you what it means now. So basically, we have an example where similarly, I want to find the age and the passenger ID of the data. Uh, of the data. And what I do is that I pass a df.log. The first argument actually stands for a colon. And what colon stands for is that I want to grab all the rows. So if you're uh, familiar with like slicing list, uh, slicing list in Python, you know that the colon means like from a num like index zero to index three, for example. But in this case, if I just pass the colon by itself, it just means I want all of it. And then for the columns, I will pass in the labels age and passenger ID. And what you will get is this data frame. Again, I look, the pandas will look at the labels, passenger ID and age, and then grab both columns. What you get is the data frame containing both the age and passenger ID. Uh, note that the way I pass my labels, like the order in which I pass my labels will matter because if I pass age before passenger ID, it will actually return the data frame with age at the front or, at, or on the left compared to passenger ID. So this is an, another example. So basically what I do here is uh, instead of passing uh, argument to the columns, let's say I want just the zero uh, index label zero and label five row of the data frame. So what I can do here is that I can pass a list containing zero comma five. So what this means is that pandas will only look at row with label zero and a label five. Uh, note that this is actually by, uh, is actually looking at the name of the, the, the label name itself. In this case, the label name is like an integer. So it actually, you can actually just pass it as an integer. But for example, let's say if this was like a cat, and this is like a mouse, for example, then you will have to pass in the arguments cat and mouse in order to get back the row. And similarly, uh, I can also pass the colon for columns. So this just means that I want all the columns in that row. Yep. Then we have df.idlog, which is similar. Like you can actually grab the uh, specific rows and columns of a data frame. But instead of doing it by label slash like the names of the columns and the rows, you are doing it by index. So like, uh, you know, the index that you're working with when you use like tuples and lists in Python. So uh, let's say I want like, you know, the, the first column and the fourth column yeah, of this data frame. So Oh, sorry, six, <laughs> the six columns. So I want the first column and the sixth column of the data frame. So what I, I will do here is that I want to pass the column as usual, which means I will grab all the rows, but only the first and the sixth column. So in this case, uh, the first column is the index zero and the sixth column has a index five. So what you will get here is that uh, this is, column index zero, one, two, three, four, five. So I'll be grabbing the passenger ID column as well as the H column and all the rows. So what you will get is similarly passenger ID and H. Uh, you can also pass similar arguments to the row index as well. So it works somewhat similar to log. In fact, um, most of the things you can accomplish df.log you can also accomplish with iLog but the context in which you use them will be different like for example if you have like uh, imagine you have a data frame with like 900 columns you won't want to like actually look through all the columns and try to see uh, which index contains the column that you want so in this case you would rather use like df.log the column that you want So now we move on to uh, something called uh, Boolean indexing. 
So in general, what this means is that uh, I'll be filtering the data frame for specific uh, conditions. So if they fulfill a specific condition, then it will actually return, you know, that row slash that column. So for example, I want to find like all passengers in this data set whose age is more than 30. So what you can do is just you spe specify, okay, where do I find the age of a passenger, which is, you know, the age column. And then I want the age to be more than 30. So this is the argument that I'll pass in. So what pandas will do here as a visualization is that in the data frame, it will look for the, the age column and you will find specific rows where the age is more than 30. So as box in orange, it will filter out these rows and it will return these four rows because they fulfill the condition. And you can actually do this with like uh, multiple conditions. All you have to do is to between each condition at like a rounded bracket around it. And uh, so you should also know that when you have multiple conditions, you need to specify whether you want both conditions to be fulfilled or just like one of these conditions. If you want both conditions to be fulfilled, you will need to use the N symbol, which actually stands for N. And this uh, straight line symbol, I, I'm not sure about the name, yeah, the vertical line. <laughs> which stands for or so what all means is that if I put like the vertical line over here instead I will just be grabbing you know the age more than 30 or the sex is equals to male so this is just a visualization if I have just bracketed like box out the values where you know the sex is equals to male and the age is equals is more than 30 so if I use the end argument, I will only get like the columns where both the sex is equals to male and the age is equals to 35. So what happens if I use all? So basically, if you use all, you will basically just get like all the rows that represent that have like these conditions fulfilled, like either one of these. So in this case, you will get uh, row 0, 1, 3, 4, 6, 7. But if it's n, you only get row 4 and 6. So as per this output, you only get 4 and 6. Yep. So this is another thing you can do after having selected and filtered your data. So uh, Let's say for some reason, I actually want to change all the, all the values, the ages of all passengers more than 30 to 10. Lah. Let's say there was some misinput, and I want to change all of these ages to 10. So what I'll do here is that I will go to, uh, I will try to save into a new data frame. And I will, in this data frame, I will filter for the data where age is more than 30. And then now I want to change the ages of these people to 10. So what happens here is that pandas, after reading the first line, will find these four rows where age is more than 30. And then after that, uh, when you reference this whole column equals to 10, the whole column will be changed to like, you know, age 10. But yeah, uh, the usefulness of like in this context, it may not be that useful because like uh, if I wanted to find the average age of the passengers on the Titanic, then it might, you know, I might be reducing the age of a couple of passengers and you will be presenting inaccurate information. So I can also do the same thing, but by row. So all I have to do here is that, okay, I'll just make a copy of the data frame. And then uh, I will search for the zero index, which is basically the first row. So what happens here is that 
uh, pandas were actually from these four rows, uh, pull out the zero index row, which is the first row, and then you will change everything to zero. Yeah, so again, you can try to contemplate whether uh, in this context, is it actually useful or not? Um, another function I want to introduce to you here is actually the df4.copy. So basically what this does is like, is like copying a list in general. So those of you who know Python, you can actually copy a list. But uh, in this case, I'm actually creating a deep copy. And what this means is that if I edit df5, I will not be affecting df4 in any way. It's a completely new object and it's not referencing to df4. So then uh, to make your code cleaner, you can also do simultaneous filtering and indexing in a single line. So what you can do here is that uh, I can first do Boolean indexing. So I will find all passengers whose age is more than 30. And then like, let's say I just want to find out, oh, uh, what sex are they of? So what I'll do here is that I will just uh, filter for the sex label. So similarly, you have a whole data frame and then it looks for passengers with age more than 30. And then I just, from these four rows, I want, you know, the sex column. So I just want to know if they're female or male. And what you'll do here is that you will get a series representing the column sex. So notice that this one is actually a little bit different from the first argument we passed with the double square brackets. This, instead of returning you a data frame, it actually returns you a series object. So this is something worth taking note of. Uh, next, we'll be moving on to these applying functions, which means that you can actually apply like, you know, a function to a specific column. You want to transform the column in some way. So one of the functions that you use to do this is df.apply. And uh, basically what this does is, before this, you actually have like a column that, like you have the whole data frame. And let's say I want to change the survive column to actually have like true or false values. So what do I do here? I can use the apply function and I can write my own custom function to actually transform this column. So I have a custom function over here has survive x. So basically this takes in an input x and if x equals to one, uh, this value will be written true, but it will be false. So when I, uh, when I pass in the function dot apply has survive, what this means is that pandas will actually look at every, sing uh, every single value in this column and pass this value in into the function. And then it will return and replace the value inside that specific row. So what you will get when you apply the function is that everything, every single value that is a one in that column will be written as true. And if there are zero or something else, be written as a false. Yeah, so you can actually try writing your own custom functions to actually apply to multiple columns. So yeah. Okay, uh, let me transit. So you take out this. Uh, Stop share. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be moving on to the quiz segment and uh, Eugene will be taking you guys from here. Okay, before we start, yeah, let me change. Sorry. Yeah. 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 I want uh wait uh, give me a minute. Okay, before we begin, let me see. I uh, really got control. Okay, can you scan the QR code again? Uh, the if you are not sure, if you are not scan QR code, 
just for the username, uh, uh, uh almost my full name, uh, Eugene Guy A E nine zero nine. Okay. Okay. I give you. I give uh, one minute for you to scan thing because uh, you all need to uh, use the full EV to assess all the questions. Yeah, in the Zoom, if and uh, no one can, uh, if everyone is so, if someone cannot, uh, if you all cannot uh, enter it, just let me know in the chat. Okay. Check. Okay, everyone, uh, enter the full EV already. Uh, give me a thumbs up or anything. Okay, all good, ah. Uh. Okay. Wait, uh. Are you okay? Okay. So I just I just proceed on, uh. Okay. First question. Can you assess the thing? Uh. Ah. Uh. See. Okay. Yes. Yeah, activator. Eh. Uh, anyone can can see a question? Eh, it's not. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, I locked it. Eh. Thank you. Okay, so look carefully. The question is, how do we find the number of rows and a column in a data frame? Okay, so what that means is, I want to get the rows, uh, the, the just how many number of rows and number of columns in the data frame. Doesn't matter how you, uh, what's the output. I just want to get the value of it. So I'll give another 10 more seconds before I stop the uh, OEV. Okay. Okay. Uh, how many people answer? Let me see. How to see how many people answer? <laughs> uh, okay, I'm just going to assume that everyone answered already. And I'm going to lock it. And the answer is <laughs> one only. Okay. Basically, uh, I make uh, some changes uh, from what it's gone through earlier. So for the first option, uh, that's correct because length DF will give you the number of rows. And then for length DF column, what I give you is number of columns itself. You can try it yourself. For the second one, uh, as you see in the slide, it's DF dot shape without the uh, bracket. Okay, so this just train you uh, to take note of those syntax error. So if you don't put DF dot shape, right, don't put the open bracket. Okay, okay. Then the second one, uh, land bracket df dot rows uh doesn't exist. It will give you an error. So, so this is something for you to take note whenever you're right uh to get those functions. Okay, so hope that is fun. Okay, moving on to the next question. Okay, let me give you some context about the second question. Uh, because uh when I show the screen, it will be very hard to see. Uh, so basically, it's my data frame. Uh, what I want to do is I apply this function df.log bracket 2 to 10 and then I want the column passenger ID, age and sex using a dot log function. Okay, so what would be the output be? Will it be uh, data frame A, data frame B and data or data frame C? There's only one correct answer. Lah. Okay, so let's go to the next question. Okay, so yeah, uh, you can look at the Data frame in your phone is easier to see. Or I can go back to the previous slide. Uh. Oh, I love four again. Sorry. Let me go. Eh? Wait, uh, sorry, sorry. Give me uh, the sequence like off a bit. Oh, it's activated. Oh, but I didn't. Uh, sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah. I don't want it auto-load. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll give another 30 more seconds for your answer. Uh, you all see from the phone, I don't see from here. I, I don't think you all can see from here. It's a bit hard. Okay. Okay, I will stop in 10 seconds. Okay. Okay, I will stop. Okay, the answer is B. Okay, so let me go back to the previous slide. Uh, so it's easier for me to explain. Okay, so why is not A? Because dot log, how it works is uh, based on labels. So it will only look from two to 10. 
So what this means, uh, that means the 10 is inclusive. So we include the row, uh, the row label of 10, which is here. So this is being included inside. Okay, so for A is wrong because uh, yeah, 10 is not included here. So it's something for you to take note when you apply the dot log function. Uh, what, uh, what values to put for the input for uh, the rows? Whether you want to, uh, if you want to have row 10, okay, you must put 2 to 10. Okay, that's for something you all take note of. Okay, now moving on to the part B. Uh, wait, uh. Okay, let me activate this in the meantime. Uh, activate the question. Okay, sorry. Give me a... Uh. Okay, yeah. Okay, so basically, uh, now, same data frame, but this time, I use dot i log 2 to 10, and I only want column index 1 and 5. Okay? So what will be the output be? Okay? Yeah. So this time, I only need 1 and 5. Uh. Index 1 and 5. Uh. All these are now is dot i log the main is based on index wise, the positioning. Okay, we got three different answer. Okay, I wait for another uh, 20 more seconds. I log back again, sorry. Don't know how it works, uh, but I'll figure out along the way. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I guess everyone has choose A. Okay, let me just put on the answer. Oh, it's actually C. Why? Because DF dot I log and dot log they differentiate in this, in the sense that hey, sorry. So yeah, let me go back to the this one. Okay, for dot i log, why is it only uh why is it b instead of c, right? Okay, well, some of y'all choose c, right? Let me go back and see. Yeah, some of y'all choose c. Eh? What's the answer? C. 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 <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> eh? Oh, I flipped it all. The... I know I so my. Sorry for the mis uh, mistake in my, in my notation. This is C, this is C, and this is B. Sorry about that. Okay, but basically, right. yeah, most of your girl is right. I, I, it's my fault. So that one, I, I avoid, I avoid the, the, the answers. So, but basically, it's this, this table, uh, this data frame. What I want to test you all is from index two to index uh, nine, okay? Because for dot I log, how it works is uh, it's based on position. And the last, the last, uh, the last number here will be exclusive. So you exclude in index ten. Okay. So how uh pandas count for index is, it doesn't matter what the label is. It will has its own function to count the position of it. Yeah. So even you have two, five, seven, all this, it will still be the same output. Okay. Okay. Next question. Okay, next question. Uh, let me see whether I activate the question. Yeah, I activated it. Okay, this is interesting. Okay, so I want you to look at, right, so uh, I need to mention earlier on. Uh, so basically, uh, the H column, it was originally float. Okay, so now in my first line, I change it to a string type. Following that, I change it to an integer. Do you think there will be error or not? Okay, so something for you to uh, think, uh, think about. Okay, I give you all uh, 20 more seconds to think about it. Unlock again, uh, sorry. Uh, lock is okay. Sorry about that. Uh. Yeah, sure. Yeah, wait another 20 more seconds then. So think carefully. I want to think carefully. It was originally a float. Now I change it to a string. Will anything happen? And then I change it to integer. Will anything happen as well? Will there be an error? Or will we successfully change it to an integer? Okay, I think I will stop the share. I'll stop the uh, lock it. Okay. And the answer is, yes, it's C again. Okay. The reason is because, uh, let's give an example here. We have, uh, can this see the thing? Can this see me? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, never mind. Okay, never mind. Just going to give an example from here. 
Okay, so uh, let's say this uh, this age, one of the age value is 4.0. Okay, his age is 4.0. So what will happen if you change to a string? String will just put a, a quotation mark over there. So if just be 4.0, it's okay. So you won't, you won't uh, result in an error. But if you change it to an integer type, what will happen is pandas cannot process 4.0 into 4. So uh, previously what Hui Shen do is only converting from 4, bracket 4 to 4. So it will not result in error. Uh, basically what Python uh, has some error in processing the 0 0.0. So it will result in some uh, value error. Uh, 4.0, I was reading like, uh, this, this is just an example only. It can be 4.5, 4.6. Uh, I, I never, I, I never see any person represent flow with 4.0. 4.0. 4.0. Uh, I don't think that's even I don't remember seeing it before. La. I gotta be honest. It works. Uh, for 4. Point. Oh, okay. But I, I think it's because uh, they process 0, 0.0, then it will result in an error. Yeah. So if you want to, uh, even for Python, it works the same as well. If you want to convert from a uh, float to index, uh, in integer is something for you to take note of. Okay. So yeah, so be careful when you change the, uh, the type of the data frame of the column. Okay. Yeah, let me go to the next question. Okay. Oh, your answer. Or oh, their answer. Their activity. Okay. So earlier on, uh, what question has uh demonstrated for dot apply function was to only use one row. But this time, I want to use more than just uh reference more, more than one row to create a new function. So what I mean here. Okay. So I give you an example here. This is just a small data frame of revenue and cost. I want to create a new column called profit. Uh, well, everyone know profit is profit equal to revenue minus cost, right? So I just want to create a new column here of profit. Do you think it's possible? Just, uh, I'm not going to ask you to create a co uh, function of it. I think it's uh, quite hard, especially you'll just start out. Okay, so I just go to the next one. Okay, so this is how you create, uh, it's possible. And how we do it is that, uh, let me, sorry, let me do this. Okay, so you reference profit first. Okay, this will create a new column. Okay, even though it haven't exist yet. And what I do here, this is the sample one DF is the previous one, which is, okay, sorry, let me go. Which is here, this is sample one DF, okay? So sample one DF, you dot apply the function and you reference uh, the row, okay? This is a function, uh, lambda row. Uh, row is the input. Row, I get the revenue minus revenue uh, row cost. Okay, something important here that I want to highlight is because you want to reference multiple row this time, you need to put comma x is equal to one. Okay, because that's uh, to tell them, uh, look at the ref, uh, row instead of the column. Because previously, uh, what question has done is look at the column and uh, do the function. For this case, I'm uh, referencing multiple rows, and it's important. I will emphasize again: put x is equal to one. If you want to reference revenue cost, you can do a lot of operator. I just giving one operator is just minus only. It's a simple function, but to execute it, uh, is something for you to take note to apply it correctly. Okay, so I hope you all learn some uh, new stuff, and now it's break time. Uh, you all can ask us any question in the chat box. Or you can just raise a hand for those people in the physical lecture. Uh, we give five minute break, sorry. Yeah, so we, we, please come back at 11 Oh yeah, sure, sure, sure. Oh, anyways, the function, I'll, I'll send the document on how to create uh, such thing. Uh, there'll be code over there la, for you to guide, guide you. But yeah, feel free to copy down if you want. Yeah. Yes. So, so for this case, yeah. Let me let me put a timer first. Yeah. Uh. So yeah. Give me yeah. Okay. 
yeah, sorry. So basically, if you want to create a new column, right, in pandas, right, you just need to create a new, this, you need to reference the correct data frame, uh, okay? So this is sample one df, okay? Then you want, you want to put, uh, what you want to put? Uh, total profit. You just put colon, total profit, and you create a new one. You can create a new one. You can just try out your, your data also. Then uh, what you can do is, yeah, I can come find you also. Okay, uh, guys, now so now it's 11.05. Uh, hope you guys are back from your break. Uh, okay. Switch it, switch it. Yeah. 
Okay, so now uh, guys, we'll be having some practical time. So please, um, for those who have joined us earlier and set up your practical notebook already, uh, okay, you guys can carry on with the first few parts of the practical notebook. I'll be going through which, um, these few parts. Okay, so this, this is what you see in the Pandas templated notebook. Um, for those who have just joined us uh, late as well, you, did, you didn't set up, uh, I'll have some, somebody to send in the link to the template little notebook and the steps to create your to save the notebook to your own drive lah. okay so now um we are in google collab uh you guys should be seeing that this should be a copy of sds hackers uh pandas template notebook so this means that you are in the correct notebook you are inside the notebook they have copied to your own drive uh, for those who, are, who want to explore using jupyter notebook uh, feel free to go ahead uh, you can open it in your own jupyter notebook as well okay so now uh Please take the next 10 to 15, uh, 10 minutes to complete this, uh, the first four chapters of this notebook. So in, in the notebook, we have some questions for you. For example, in viewing the data frame, we want you to extract the first five columns. Take it as like a task to test on the syntax. You can make reference to the example notebook that I shared earlier. And please feel free to complete uh, all the way up to the end of applying functions. It, it's just some short exercises and in the after 10 minutes i'll be going through the answers uh step by step i'll take you guys along uh and type the code and do some coding lah, so that we can fam all familiarize familiarize ourselves with the syntax so please take the next 10 minutes i'll be back at eleven seventeen. uh if you guys face any problems yeah you can you can raise in the chat as well okay see you guys in 10 minutes Okay, sorry, for those who have entered late, uh, let me share with you guys the, the steps to set up your practical notebook. Uh, it's over here. So uh, for the sake of going through, for those who join, up, join us late, uh, sorry, yeah. you guys can please access uh, the link to the practical notebook. So this is the link to the practice notebook. Afterwards, you need to save a copy by clicking on file and then press on save a copy in drive. Afterwards, uh, you can head over to this link to download the data set. And then you can click on this folder. Go back to your copy. Uh, make sure that it's your own copy of the templated notebook so that you're running it in your own Google Drive. Then you click on folder and then you drag the CSV here so that you can upload the file for Google Collab to process the data set. Yeah. So I'll leave the instructions here. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, please make use of the example reference notebook to guide you along in the coding to answer those questions. Okay, hi guys. Uh, hope you guys have finished up the short uh, practical answers. So now I'll be going through with you all on uh, the answers la, to the practical notebook. Okay, so for the first question, uh, importing data set, all of this has already been done for us. So we we'll just need to run this code and then you are storing the data set into uh, DF, the object DF. Okay, so now for viewing the data frame, let's say you want 
the, the question was to extract the first five columns. Eh, sorry, the first five rows. Sorry, it should be first five rows. So you just need to input, use the function hit. You can specify n equals to five, and then it will show the first five rows. Uh, if not, you, by default as well, you can just put it without um, any arguments, and you'll return the first five. Uh, as mentioned earlier, you can also use tail. So this will show the last few rows, as you can see by the index labels. Okay, for summary statistics, uh, you want to use the describe function. Sorry. So this will just do an overall summary of the, st uh, of the entire data set. So you can see the mean, max, as shown earlier. Okay. Okay, so now you want to see the data types and the number of non null values in each column. So you can just do that by using the info function. As you can see, H has uh, a lot of null values and cabin has a lot of null values as well. So this is a concern to if you want to analyze data because you have some missing data. So we'll teach you all how to do how to handle such missing data later on in the workshop. So what are the column names? This one you can just use df.column so you can print out the list of the column names. So the next question is to is when uh, is they are they're asking whether are there any null rows? As seen earlier, yeah, there are null rows as shown in the info. However, you want to know the number of um, null rows, you can use the is now function. Then after that, you sum up as shown in the slides. So this will output the total number of null rows in each column. Okay, so now it's selecting, indexing, and filtering. Uh, now the question is, can you show me the rows where h is greater than 30? So you need to first make sure that you are indexing to the column h. And then you're going to do a Boolean test. So you're testing whether it is more than 30. So if the column is more than 30, then it will output. So in this case, the syntax is just like that. DF, you can consider it as DF where H is more than 30. Of it that way. You're trying to make a code, translate code into pseudo code so you can make yourself understand the code better. Okay, so now uh, can you list the names of the male survivors as well as uh, and their age? 840 and above. So this means that there are multiple conditions to be fulfilled. So let's first um, filter the, the H more than 40. So we just reference to the column H. And afterwards, we specify the argument such that it's more than 40. Next is the combiner operator. So now it, it is a, it's a, we need both conditions to be fulfilled. So we'll use the N operator. And then now we want to specify that the name is equal to, uh, sorry, oh, sorry, sex, sorry, it should be sex. The sex should be equals to male. So take note, if you type male, you see that this will result in nothing. Sorry, this resulted in nothing. That's because the male in the data set is case sensitive. Lah. So in the data set, you can see that male is actually inputted with a small m. So please take note, when you're doing such Boolean indexing, you need to make sure that the entry matches exactly what the data set as inputted. So in this case, now it will work. So now I'm printing out the, I already tested um, the conditions and then I want to print out the columns of the column name. So this will return a series of the names of these two conditions. Okay, so now <clears throat> we want to, can I see the rows 300 to 400 and only the name, sex and age column. So now we can use the log function. So we are identifying the labels column 300, eh, sorry, row 300 to row 400. As you can specify this in the log function. Afterwards, you can input all the uh, the column names. So this is quite simple. Just need to fill up. And this would work when you run the code. Row 300 to 400. Take note, it's by, in, uh, by the labels of the row. It's not, not by... Okay, so now the last part is to apply functions. Okay, so now the question is, uh, they cannot interpret what does survive equals to one and survive equals to zero means. So can you change something to more meaningful? So what this function as mentioned in the slides is to convert it into survive or die. So it's just a way uh, to test ourselves to apply the function. So first, this is already done for you. It makes a copy of the DF. So I'm storing it into DF2. Okay, so now I need to apply the function. So how do I apply the function? Uh, we need to uh, first make sure we are using the apply function onto the survived column. So dot apply, then all we need to do is just input the function here and make sure that we are storing it back into the same column. So what this does is to apply the function onto the survive column 
and then we are reassigning back to the same column so that we are replacing the data set in df2 with the appropriate um with the appropriate entries la. so if you run this this will work and you can see that survive column is no longer one and zeros it is all died or survive sorry lambda uh okay uh but you need to because this one is like if or else ma so you, if you want you need to it's better to create your own function i shouldn't do lambda lambda is if you want to plus or minus sorry you can also use the ternary operator in the lambda function uh okay uh actually i'm not very familiar with the lambda okay Oh yeah, okay, so else L zero, right? Oh L side, sorry. Sorry, lambda x survive if x equals to one. Else Oh okay now. Okay. okay, the lambda function works also. Okay, thanks, thanks. Yeah. Uh but yeah, okay. So you can see that anonymous functions work in the apply function. Uh, if not, it's better for beginner coders like me also, I prefer to use functions so I can exactly identify um, what my if else statements are. Yeah, so you can choose different ways to do it. Okay, so now uh, we are done with the uh, practical. We'll go back to the next part of the theory. Okay. So now I'll be sharing with you all some uh, statistical measures you can do. So what does statistics mean? We want to apply aggregation on a column basis. So the first um, set, uh, function that I'll be introducing to you all is to aggregate, uh, sorry, is to group by a specific column and then you perform an aggregating function. So the syntax is df.groupby, then you need to specify what column you want to group by. Then after that, you put the dot act. So dot act means that you want to perform an aggregating function you need to specify a function so that you can calculate like the numerical columns so for example df dot group by sex so it first manipulates the data frame and it's such that it groups by sex and then you calculate the mean so in the you're specifying a uh, mean into the aggregating function so what this outputs is the entire uh, the mean values of all the numerical call all the other numerical columns based on their sex so you can see that, oh, females are actually younger on board. The female passengers are um, um, generally younger than male. Or you can see that the fare of the females are like, you know, more than the males. La. And what this means, maybe like females are like richer or something in the past. But okay, it's not just any else say, but generally you can infer some, make some form of, in, in, uh, you can make some form of inference la, to your data, to the, all the data set and what the data tells you. So this is a very important function. Uh, but there's an easier way to perform this function. So you can basically just do group by then dot mean or dot sum. So this eliminates the need to type dot act then the, 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 the parentheses. So you can just do df dot group by uh, sex then after that dot mean then dot sum. Make sure that you specify this um, this parentheses because it basically means that you need to call the function. So yeah, this will output the same thing. Uh, in this case, there's a pointer thing about what data is useful. Is it really useful to sum up data all the time? Not really. La. You can see that actually passenger, the passenger ID you sum up, there's no purpose. Or the survive column you sum up, also not very purposeful. La. So what this means, you need to make sure that whatever analysis you do, whatever manipulation you do, make sure try to make sure that it's purposeful. If you are not doing it on an exploratory basis. Yeah, feel free to explore, uh, but um, when you do when you perform meaningful transformations, make sure that you're applying to the applying the correct functions. La. Okay, so now another statistical measure you can do is to highlight the correlation. You can identify the correlation uh, of the different numerical variables. So correlation means is that it measures the linear relationship of one variable to the. So if it's like, for example, if it's like uh, very like close, it's like very high, you can see that this patch uh, variable and Okay, sorry, that's not a good example. You can see like, for example, like passenger class and age. So there's a negative correlation. This means that when one is higher, it uh, the another variable is lower. But it does not mean that that variable causes it to be, it does not mean that the passenger class of the passenger, or like the age defines their passenger class. It just means that they are in a way that they, one is higher and one is low. When one is higher, one is slightly lower. 
Yeah, so that's like negative correlation. That's an example uh, in short form. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this df.call function uh, basically prints out the entire uh, correlation matrix. So it's very, very in quickly identifying what the correlation index is uh, across two variables. Uh, so this is just uh, extra for your information. Actually, you can import, sorry, you can use other libraries like data visualization libraries to fit the matrix into a heat map. So what this heat map is basically give a colorful representation of this matrix. You can see that it is indicated by the scale of the color. And you can quickly identify the variables that have very strong or very negative like correlation la, between the variables. So this is a very, just a fun fact la, that can convert a matrix into a beautiful um, visualization that gives you insights quickly. Okay, so now I'll be handing over back to my partner who will be sharing with you all on how to uh, handle missing values. La. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So uh, we'll be moving on to handling like null values and uh, to do so there will be like some special considerations. Uh which I'll be covering right now. So um, the first way to actually deal with null values is that you can actually um, drop them. Like you can just simply say, okay, I, I don't want these rows and then I just want to drop. So what I can pass is df.dropNA. This is a function that allows you to drop rows with null values in all or specified columns. So in this case, uh, let's say I want to drop uh, I want to drop rows where you know the H is uh, where the value of H and cabin is not specified. It's an NAN value. So what I can do here is that I can create a copy of the original data frame DF8, and then pass a drop NA and uh, a subset of H and cabin. So, uh, what subset does is actually uh, specifies the specific columns that I want to drop. So here's like a visualization again. So you have the whole data frame. And then uh, for the column cabin, you will see that if the value in cabin is NAN, it will be boxed out in blue. And if the H is null, it will be boxed out in orange. So what pandas does is that it will filter out these uh, box rows and then it will remove them from the data. So you will get the four remaining rows. And yeah, uh, the output will basically be the data frame without rows that contain now values in columns. So uh, yeah, if you were to pass it without the subset, then it would look at all the columns and then it will return basically all the rows without null values. So here's another way to deal with your uh, values in general. So uh, this function is called fill NA. Uh, what it does is to actually uh, fill up the NAN values with a value that you specify yourself. So in this case, uh, I have passed in a none this is a string, none, not a null value, none. Uh, so what this does is that uh, it will look at you know, all of the values where uh, the value is NAN. And then uh, it will basically fill up these null values with N-O-N-E, like the none string, and then output this data frame. So note that uh, I believe there were a couple of questions regarding this earlier on, which is about the in-place uh, argument that you can pass to specific functions. So, uh, certain functions in pandas actually include like an in-place argument. So uh, some of them by default in-place is true. So what this means is that uh, you don't have to reassign back the variable when you are past, uh, when you're running this line. It will automatically edit the data frame and fill up all the null values. However, if you use in place equals to false, uh, you will have to reassign the variable back. So what this means is that when you pass this function, you will also have to return uh, df8 equals to that function. Then you will get back the same thing. 
Yeah, so certain functions in pandas will be in place true by default and in place false by default. So you will have to pay attention to this. You can actually use the pandas documentation to see if the in place is true or false. Uh, then there is this thing. Uh, you should also use this function with caution. So what I mean is that, so pay attention to the H column. I have inserted a string value into what uh, Eugene said earlier was a float column. So what happens here is that when I insert a string value into a float column, I will convert this whole column into a column that takes in objects. So if I run df8.info, I will see that you know h, the data type has changed to an object. So what this means is that you will have like uh, multiple data types in the same column already. So this might be a float, and this is a string. It will preserve the data types by converting into an object column. So what this means is that if you try to pass a Boolean indexing that compares like your h to an integer 30, Pandas will run through each of these rows and it will do it successfully for the first five rows. But for row number six, when it looks at the string none and it tries to compare to an H 30, it will not be able to compare. So this is why you get, you will be getting a type error, which says that this operator is not supported between string and integers. So this is one of the more common errors that you can also have when you do field NA. So you have to pay attention to which data types you're dealing with. There's also another way of using field NA, which is instead of filling in a specific value, maybe you want to fill it in based on like what the uh, other values in the data frame. So you have the method argument, which is you should pass aside like without using the value argument. So I have my data frame here, like a chopped part of the data frame. And as you can see, I have now values in the H and the cabin columns. So now I'll be introducing the first method, which is a forward field, otherwise known as F field. And what F field does is that uh, for the H column, I'll use an example. Uh, this now value will look up to columns. Uh, it will look at rows above it. And then it will check for the first non null value. In this case, the first non null value in H is 35. So what this does is that uh, the null value will now be filled in with the value on top. So as you can see for the cabin column, if there's no null value, uh, if there's no non null value on top of it, for example, the first row, then this NEN value will remain as an NEN value. On the other hand, uh, the other rows will be filled in based on you know what's above them. So if you have a forward field, then you also have a backward field. So in this case, it's represented by B field. What B field does is that it will look, it will do a similar thing, but it will look at rows below it. So for the same null value in H, I will look at the row below it. The non null value is 54, so it will be replaced with 54. And as you can see, for the first row in the cabin column, it will be filled up with the first non null value below it, which is C85. So it will be replaced uh, in general. Sorry? Yeah, it should it, it is it should be possible to fill in for specific columns. Like you just have to specify which column you want to fill in. Yeah, so using your previous indexing technique, you can just uh, specify df, df that column oh. dot fill and a. Oh. Yeah. Uh, regarding uh, a possible argument in fill and a, I'm uh, 
it's possible to check through the pandas documentation as well yeah um yeah so yeah just be aware when especially when you're filling in like specific information like for example if i feel in the age but let's say i wanted to find the average age of like a uh, passenger on the titanic so if you were to change uh if you were to fill in the value using a f fill it will be very different from when you fill it with a back fill because the values are vastly different so you can only use this function in like a specific context la. so let's say maybe you 3d sorted you can sort the data frame first then after that do a forward fill or a back fill yeah so now we'll be moving on to merging and concatenation which will be covered by eugene okay right, back to me again okay so now uh we have done with a lot of like just doing with one table. We are now do uh now I go through merge and concatenate because we are now doing referencing two tables or it can be more. But for this case, I'll just be going through two tables. Okay, so let's go with the easier function, uh pd dot concat. Okay, so for this case, we have a top and the bottom. Okay, for in general, uh pd dot concat, if the axis is equal to zero. Uh, what this means is that it will extend the rows itself and not extend the columns as much as possible. So for this case, uh, you can see that the column name for df top and df bottom are the same. So when you do pd.concat, you df top here and df bottom. So what will happen is basically it will squeeze together and they will just combine them based on uh, the order. So because df top is first, you will put 1 to 5 here and 6 to 10 following that. Uh, because both have the same, uh, both tables have the same attributes, uh, there won't be a standard number. So it will still be the same number of columns, but this time more rows for the concatenated version. Okay, so now we'll move on to axis equal to 1. So uh, what this means, we're now focusing on column and we'll extend the column of it, concatenate the, based on the columns. So you can see, uh, this time the column names are all very different. And so what you do here, df left and df right, instead of merging uh, horizontally, eh, vertically, it will merge, uh, merge horizontal, yeah, but basically merge horizontal okay, for x is equal to 1. So what will happen here, because I put df left on the first and df right following that, uh, passenger ID, which was on the left, df left, will be first row, first column and the number of rows because uh, will be the same because both df left and df right have the same number of rows so it is something for you to take note uh, for pd.concat okay so that's all for pd.concat now i will like to go through pd.merge and this got to do with uh, some joining function which i will explain uh, slowly and something for you to digest uh, when and something very interesting to do so we have df merge here and df merge too. By default, it's an inner join. What this means is, okay, basically I, set, I put that in the Venn diagram here. Okay, so what this means is that this is from df merge one and this from df merge two. Those in the intersect are found in both merge one and merge two uh, based on this on equal passenger ID. So I look at here. Okay, so for df merge one, I have two, three, four, five uh, from one to six. For df merge 2, for passenger ID, I have 2 to 7. So what this means is that for df merge 1 and df merge 2, uh, we have 2 to 6. And for 1, it's not found in df merge 2, so it's outside the df merge 2 circle. And then for df merge 2, we have 7, which is found in df merge 2, but not found in df merge 1. This is just an example I give so that you can understand the context where later I'll do inner join, left join, right join, so on and so forth. Okay? So for the first one, we'll be doing inner join. What this means is that you only focus on the intersect area, okay? So because df merge one is a left table and df merge two is a right table based on how I uh, do it, uh, what this means is that you will combine all the columns and because passenger ID and passenger ID are the same here, it will just be the same here. There won't be extra column. So total, there'll be total of four columns. One, two, three, and four. Okay, so that's df dot. Uh, that's how you apply df dot merge. 
Okay, now it's the same, same parameters, but I have this thing, how equal to left. Basically, uh, can anyone guess where, uh, where would this take place at? Okay, basically it's the left side. Uh, okay, so it will take in one and take in the intersect as well. What this means is that when you merge them together, what will happen for passenger ID one? Interestingly, you can see for ticket and age because it's uh, because for passenger ID one is not found in DF merge two, right? Ticket and age uh, is not available for passenger ID one. So what will, what will pandas do is that you will put a now value for both ticket and age for passenger ID one. Okay, everyone digest that. So but because uh, for the name is very found in there, so it will just be uh. It will just be inserted inside. Well, for the rest, we just uh, fill out uh, accordingly. Same for the inner joint. Okay, so now we'll go to how equal to right. And it's just a symmetry of how equal to left in the sense that now instead of one being selected, seven will be selected. Okay, so you can see here uh, because DF uh, passenger ID seven is found at uh, DF merge two, but not found in DF merge one. So what will happen is because there's no name attribute for passenger ID seven uh, attribute being column name, it doesn't have the name column here. Uh, when you merge them together, what will happen? Pandas will put now. Okay. And last one, how equal to outer. Basically, we've gone through all kinds of possibility. This is the last one. Basically, it will include all possible uh, all possible rows. And it will just fill out accordingly because person, uh, I said before, passenger ID 1 doesn't have ticket and age uh, value. So it will be now for passenger ID 7. There's no uh, name value. So we just put it now. Okay. So hope that uh, that is all right to understand. Now, we'll be going on to quiz. Uh, let me uh, stop share this here. Yeah, yeah. Huh? It's the same link. Yeah. Uh, okay. Sorry about that. Uh, okay, so next one. Oh. Okay, give me a minute. Huh? Okay. Uh, oh, it's a Noom chat. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to activate the first question, uh, fifth question. Yeah, uh, I'm locking now. Okay, so I'm back to the merging side. Uh, do I wait first? Give me a minute. Uh. Sorry, the physical lecture. Waiting for them to assess. Okay, can all assess already? Okay, let me go through what question five is. Uh, basically, how do I want to find all the passengers with name but do not have age using DF merge one and two? Okay, so it has the age column name, but it doesn't. 
yeah, it doesn't have, sorry, let me rephrase again. It has the name column, but it doesn't have the age column. And I want to merge them together. Okay. So should I use uh, inner join, left join, or right join? Okay. Oh, sorry, there's no result here. Okay. Uh, okay. The answer is because I, uh, there's some issue here. The answer is B. And the reason for it is because you want to have the name but do not have the age. Okay, so let me go back to here. Okay, so for this case, why do you use left join? It's because uh, if you use inner join, what will happen is that it will exclude out uh, one. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm, I, I, had, uh, I put a square bracket wrongly. It's from two to six, there is a common intercept. So basically, if you use inner join, what will happen is passenger ID one is excluded. But we need passenger ID one uh, because they are the one with name, but do not have an age as well. So the only way to do so is that we use the left join. And what it does here, you include one and six. Is it one and six? There are one and six because you can see passenger ID one and passenger ID six. They do not have an age to it. And is uh and what panels do we give them a noun? Yeah. Okay, so for next question. Sorry about that. Okay. Let me go to the next question. So this is a suggested code. So basically, I use left join. After that, uh, I use the isNow function to only get those rows uh, with name, but do not have an H. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll send the code later for the suggested code. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, next question. Okay. Okay, so let me activate it. Okay, let me unlock it. Okay, so let me give the context for question six. Okay, so for this case, I have uh, this sample data, uh, data frame I created again. Okay, for this time, I drop the NA. What will happen here, as gone through earlier, the one with the NAN will be dropped, so you don't have the uh, row index tree in here. Okay, so what would happen if I were to perform a job NA function? Uh, sorry, I did a job NA function and I perform this code. Uh, this code, sample two underscore dot log bracket three comma. What would happen? Will it result in an error, or will there be no error? Okay. Okay, so the answer is actually there will be error. Uh, I don't know why it doesn't display the results. Uh, but basically, uh, I see that 56% has chosen uh, error, and that's correct. Uh, that's because, as mentioned earlier, for dot log function, you look at the label here. And when you put dot log tree, right, what will happen? Pandas cannot recognize the uh, label of tree. So it will result in an uh, error, the key error. So it's something for you to take note of when you do uh, job NA. What uh, the cost, uh, customary practice is, just reset that index. And you'll make your life easier la, when you drop the NA. Okay? So that's something to take note because uh, for pandas, they won't help you reset the index. You have to automate, uh, you have to do it manually. Okay. So the next uh next question. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So now it's same thing, drop the NA. What happened? I do dot I log three. Will anything happen as well? Or oh, let me uh see whether I activated it. Oh, I didn't. Sorry. Let me unlock it. Okay. So this time, instead of dot lock, I dot I lock it. Okay. So we result an error or no error. Okay. Uh, give 10 seconds. Okay. It seems that everyone chooses the correct answer. Uh, I cannot display, but it's 100% chooses no error. And that's correct because for pandas, it will just be based on uh, your own counting system and it will output the last, uh, last, last row. So basically, you will count 0, 1, 2, and 3. Okay, it's there. So you will output the last row. So that's okay. And even if the row, this row 4 is not here, 
it will just output nothing if uh, this it, this thing is uh, this thing is absent. Okay, so something for something for you to take note of for dot log will result in an error for dot i log is okay it doesn't matter and you output the log. Uh, negative one I haven't tried out we can index, index should be okay. Yeah, because this is based on Python index I think it should be okay. But yeah, correct me if I'm wrong lah. Okay. Yeah, I hope you. Yeah, so this will be the output. It will give you a series output instead. Okay, so now we'll go through practical by dealer. Sorry guys, uh, in the interest of time, uh, we'll not be going through practical too. Uh, however, the answers to all the following questions in the practical notebook will be sent out to you all in the link. So we'll just uh, skip ahead with the conclusion to recap on what uh, we have learned in today's workshop. Lah. So uh, in today's workshop, uh, we have first learned how to view the data frame, seeing a preview and having to get familiar with the data frame itself. Lah. After we identified how to change data types if we need to, um, if we need to in certain scenarios. Lah. Uh, there are special other considerations such as date time uh, data, uh, data types, which has not been covered in this workshop. Um, but I urge you to try to explore it lah, when you're handling with date time columns in the future. Uh, next, we have identified one of the most important things you need to learn, which is indexing, selecting, and filtering the frame uh, by using the square brackets, dot log, and dot i log respectively. Uh, next is to apply functions if you want to change certain values or anything within the data uh, within the data set. Statistical functions to perform your aggregating functions like mean, sum, uh, other aggregating functions like count as well. Uh, group by a specific column. So we have, teach, we have taught you all how to do the group by, and as well as just shown you how to use how to create a correlation matrix. Afterwards, we have introduced to you all uh, the how to handle missing values like drop NA, uh, filling in the NA or the handling missing values lah. And lastly, we have went through how to merge and concatenate data sets together, two different data frames together combined into one with certain kinds of joins to specify like how you want the data frame, the resulting data frame to be. Okay, so um, we can, uh, you guys can access this link. Uh, please feel free to bookmark this link. We'll be uploading the slides in PDF format as well as the practical notebook, uh, which has already been filled up. Uh, the practical notebook, which is the one where we had to skip today lah, because of the uh, interest of time. So please feel free to bookmark this link. We'll be uploading all the workshop materials within there in the next uh, one hour or so. Uh, yeah, the slides will definitely be on there. I presume most of you all are very concerned about that. So please feel free to make use of the slides to guide you all in coding. Uh, while, while we may not have taught like all the advanced functions in Pandas, uh, please feel free to explore the Pandas documentation uh, for further usage of um, different arguments or other uh, functions that have been specified in the documentation. We are only here to teach you and give you an introduction to Pandas so that you guys can, you know, uh, move on from here. Lah and take our slides, look at the transformations, and then carry on your, uh, your functions, lah, and you can manipulate data with the basic syntax. So yeah, uh, learning doesn't stop here. Please feel free to explore. Okay, uh, so now we have created, we also created a feedback form uh, so that we can receive your feedback for subsequent workshops. Uh, this will not be the only workshop conducted. There'll be other uh, data science workshops. Uh, please feel free to join our Telegram channel and also join NUS Hackers Telegram channel for other workshop, uh, other upcoming workshops. Uh. Uh, okay, please access this link if you have any feedback to leave. Uh, does NUS Hackers want to say anything? They want to say anything. Okay, so um, we have come to the end of the workshop. Thank you guys for attending this workshop. Um, please feel free to leave a feedback. Uh, yeah, any feedback will be appreciated. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so um, if you guys want to leave, you guys can leave the Zoom call. We'll just stay on here for a little more to show the feedback form. And yeah, we will upload the slides uh, now. <laughs>